Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be testing out a new mold from Nicole Molds along with a magnetic centering tool, some mica powders, and their new sealer. This is such a beautiful mold. The rose lid makes it a stunning decor piece for your home. And what's even better is that you can create refillable candles to keep freezing your jar. Their new sealer is also made to seal candle jars. I'll show you what the jar looks like after the wax is fully burned to see how the sealer held up. This mold has a magnetic closure, which is easy and convenient to use. The last mold I tested had clips to keep the outer form together, but this new model has magnets, which I thought was a cool feature. To find out how much jessamonite you need, pour water into the mold and measure the weight in grams. Divide that number by two to get the amount of liquid you need, then multiply the amount of liquid by 2.5 to get the amount of powder you need. For this mold, you'll need around 157.5 grams of base and 394 grams of powder. This time I tried using the retarder because it slows down the curing process and it worked really well. I don't know why I didn't try it sooner, so I highly recommend trying it if you need more time to mix the colors and mix um, the powder and liquid together before it starts to set. I like to pour a little bit of the pigment onto a stick and slowly add it in. A little goes a long way and I usually like to mix lighter pastel colors and you can't really take out the pigment once it's added. You can mix in white to lighten the color but there's still a limit to how much you can add so just add the pigment slowly. With the retarder, it did take a longer time to set. I can usually demold in 30 minutes, but this one I left in the mold overnight. Just check on it in a few hours to see if it's ready to demold. When the edges started to set, I wanted to try adding a stamp into the jasmineite. I just purchased a custom ceramic stamp of my logo, so I'll test that out in a future video. But I used a cookie stamp I got from a Japanese dollar store to see how it would turn out. I wasn't particularly drawn to the colors of the mica powder. To be honest, I'm not sure what I would use these colors for, but I decided to give it a try on some older projects. I didn't fill this one with wax because I ended up creating a weak spot in the jar from the stamp. It's pretty much a hole from the letter E, so just make sure you stamp lightly. I thought about adding another layer of jessamonite over the letters, but it's also hard to recreate the same color to match seamlessly. I decided to keep this one as a decor piece and use it as a jar to store things. I used Freedom Soy Wax and two CD8 wicks for this vessel. I think it's a bit overwicked for this fragrance, 
so I'll probably try CD6 or CD4. The refill mold holds around 170 grams of wax. I mixed a bit of mica powder into the sealer and dabbed it onto the ends using a cosmetic sponge. I did try to brush it on the ends, but I didn't like the way the brush strokes looked, so I used a cosmetic sponge to dab it lightly on the petal. I sealed just the outside of the jar with Mod Podge Matte Sealer. I find that the spray sealers are best for projects that have a lot of small details because brush on sealer is hard to get into every corner. Burn this candle multiple times until it reached the bottom. There is some staining from the fragrance oil I used, but the outside looks super clean, nothing seeped out, so that's a good sign. You can also create just the bottom portion to make a candle vessel. The rose lid actually requires a lot more jasmineite than I thought, so you don't have to make it for every jar. If you're making this for yourself, you could create a couple rose toppers and make it interchangeable with the bottoms. I actually tried using the rose to make a candle, and I love how it turned out. The flower is large, so you can either place it on a different vessel or snap off some of the petals, to make it fit on top. 